Hello guys. It's Mr. Yi. How are you? Okay, so the purpose of this, uh, I was inspired, I was reading through the, uh, the submissions for the uh, portrait with the muscles and the skeleton and uh, the facial features and uh, I was inspired by Julie, Julie's, uh, Julie, uh, Julie D. And um, I just want to, I'm going to use her references, her drawings as a basis for this just to you know, just demonstrate the process and uh, hopefully this helps you out. Maybe pull out, point out some things to look for and to maybe observe. And uh, I thought her drawings were just awesome, really cool. And um, I just want to like not build on it, but just kind of my take on ins inspiration from her drawings. So let's go ahead. I have it. I have her drawings up on the screen and I'll be referring to those as I draw along. So first we're going to do the... Uh, the skeleton and first I'm going to draw the line establishing like the, the you know the line of symmetry and sometimes you can fold the paper just slightly and then you get like that crease and that'll give you the line to, to work with all right so this establishes kind of like the height of the uh, skull and uh, you know this one I'm going to kind of draw the uh, a box this rectangle and this kind of gives me the space I'm dealing with here and if uh, do an X that gives me my compositional center vertical and horizontal and then it, within this uh, I'm going to put a circle this is the center of my circle this box helps me to create the symmetry of the uh, curvature of the top portion of the cranium, the skull. And this is just kind of reiterating some of the things we did earlier. I'm just going a little bit faster. And here I'm going to, this is where the chin will be. So I'm going to, from the furthest point on the side here, I'm going to draw a line to this trapezoid. See this? There's the chin in the middle and this is the width of the chin, right? So you can you can widen this or you can narrow it or even bring it up later if your character has a little bit of a weaker chin. Okay, so this is more of an adult, yeah, I think of more of a female type of portrait here. I'm just blocking in this skull. Now here, this is the center. Maybe that's like uh, the between your eyes, you know, or a little bit above. Uh, I'm going to create like a band. This shows me where the eyes should be. Okay. And let's see, I also want to <clears throat> figure out the, um, let's see, where the openings for the eyes are. And I mentioned like Ray Ban sunglasses. So here's left side, right side. And these lines help me to keep it symmetrical. Okay. Next, we're going to put in where should the between this line and this chin. This is the middle right here between that, and then this will give me an idea of where the the nose. And I'm just going to do a reversed out heart. You see this simple heart shape that indicates where our nose cavity would be. And then below that, from this point to the chin in the middle. Uh, I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. That's the middle of our mouth, okay? And for the mouth, how wide is the mouth? So we have the corner of the eye, okay? So you notice one, two, and then we have like a, we can fit another eye right in the middle between those two. Then some circles for the eyeballs. Okay, and then we do the the pupil, simple shapes. But I'm really keyed in on proportion here. Now the corner of the eye, if I drop down a line, that can give us like a relative idea of where our upper lip should be. And then this is our lower lip. So I'm going to look at uh, Julie's picture here. This is my take on Julie's character. 
maybe for our neck, we'll just put neck coming down. Okay, so there's our, our well, we we kind of skipped ahead, didn't we? I'm sorry. Let me bring in the uh, upper jaw, the lower jaw, and below the lips, that's where the, the teeth were, right? Okay, so now let's bring in uh, the basic muscles that we talked about. And Julie has that in hers. So the frontalis connected to the brow. Okay, and then we have, uh, let's see, the muscles around the eye. And it's kind of like echoing the opening that we created. So we have muscles, and we have muscles around the mouth as well. So these uh, concentric circles, ovals, egg-like shapes. And then we have from the, the cheek, we have those muscles tied to the mouth, connected to the outside of the eyes. So these cables, kind of like woven, okay? These pulleys, these strings to articulate, gives us the ability to kind of make all those different expressions of the face. So there's our basic muscles. Now the the portrait looks kind of like wide-eyed, okay, because we don't have any eyelids or surface. Now let's move on to, if I look at Julie's image, the next step is to define the, uh, the eyes. So we have the proportion of the eyes, but Let's go ahead and just go wrap around the top of the eyeball, this big old ellipse. See that? We're wrapping around the eyeball, top and bottom. And this, this character still looks like just in shock. Their eyes are just open like, oh my gosh. Really like uh, startled looking. So now I'm going to connect the corners of the eye. You see the oval of the eye that we start? I'm going to connect the corners to the other corner, but watch this. Now I'm going to go overlap the the pupil. Look at that. You know, it's like that kind of calms down that expression a little more relaxed. Now, if this this the eyelid goes too far down, they look kind of sleepy. They look kind of tired, maybe. Okay, that helps. Now let's go to the nose, and we did the nose where we. If I look at Julie's nose, let's see here, we have the kind of like a circle in the front, circle on the side, and then from the center, we create the nostril, we this kind of watermelon seed kind of curving out. And I think uh, Julie's nose, no, not her nose specifically, but uh, let's see. So nose, we have the basic shape of the nose comes up, follows the brow, the the muscles around the eye, goes up on the opposite side. Now you can make the eyes a little bit smaller if you'd like, just make it so we have a little bit more space in between. So you get to adjust the uh, proportion. Let's go back to the lips and define the shape of the lips a little bit more. Now. Now the, the chin, if you want to make it a little more delicate, just bring it in a little bit. There you go. Now we look at this big old cranium in the foreground here. It's actually pretty good. This is a good stable base for the, the hair that we add later on. And let's see here, the ears. Let's um, take some practice. Where do the ears begin at the top? and end at the bottom. So I'm just going to start off with kind of like pointed ears, maybe stop at the base of the nose. This is kind of like trapezoid shape. And then I'm going to go back in and curve it out a little bit. We'll do more in-depth details of the ear later. Okay, so that process of layering, layering, the, and this takes practice. If you have this is the first time you've done this, it's just a really good exercise because the you don't have to do this all the time forever. 
but by going through this process, you can really understand, have a feel for what's beneath the surface. All right. <clears throat> now, I think this eyelid coming down and adding you know, a little bit darker line at the top softens the eyes. Let's go ahead and darken in uh, the eyes, the pupil. I want to put a catch light, which is the reflection off the light in the room or outside, whatever. So I'm going to put a light right there in another circle and I'm not going to shade that in I'm just going to keep that this character looks kind of expressionless right very kind of a little bored <laughs> okay so let's see let's add some uh, basic hair here so I'm not too sure about if it's curly hair or frizzy hair that you have um, it's it cover up dramatic Let's try this. Uh, let's try ribbons. Okay, ribbons as shapes, not just strings, but uh, so look at this ribbon shape. This was like a, a drawing assignment we had from beginning drawing or drawing one, but essentially I'm creating rhythm, rhythms of ribbons. You see that? And they don't always have to go in the same direction. They can have just variation, kind of moving, kind of free forming them. I'm adding, I'm, I'm designing the hair at this point. And, but there's just ribbons. So I use this line right here. And then on the opposite side, if I want to kind of flow the other direction, I want to have that cur curve and it comes down. And then let's finish it off with a kind of a curly cue at the bottom. and make that a shape. You see how I just doubled up that line? Let's do it again for this side and a little bit of a variety. And I just keep adding until I feel like the, oh, they are as big as I want it to be. What do you think? Did that help to balance out that large forehead and draw our attention to the eye? Um, let's see here. So again, this is my take off of Julie's character and and just that whole process of layering. And all right, let's see here. Now, just a little hint for shading across this band of hair. Let's take this piece, this shape right here. We have to determine what's the high point and the low point. So the, the peak and the trough. So the peak I'm going to keep lighter and the trough I'm going to make darker. So in essence, it's almost like a value scale that we studied in drawing one. We went from light to dark, light to dark, that rhythm of light to dark. So here, this is the trough. This is like the, it's farther away from us, this curl. So it's going to be darker. So I'm going to make that three shades, approximately three distinct shades. There's a dark, there's a, a, a light, a gray, and a highlight at, at the peak of this. So then on, on the next shape, it goes darker. There's a shadow area. And it gets darker. But as it moves up again, it gets lighter. It gets lighter. And then it goes darker again. And it goes lighter again, up and down. And if I kind of keep this rhythm for the hair, it gives the hair dimension. And we're not worried about individual strands. It's, uh, and this is just a, you know, you have this skill from drawing one, the idea of gradients, light and dark, light and dark. And I'm gonna move on to the next band here. So it's darker lighter and if I make it slightly different than this band of hair that shape of uh, hair that ribbon of hair or this type of hair then the texture it, and the way it hits the light it makes it a more three-dimensional as well because if they're all in the same direction same it's kind of boring it creates variety so here I'm going to take it start off dark and as it moves down it gets lighter high point is highlight okay and then go down the, the valley it's going to get shadow area obscuring 
the highlight or the light source of this scene. Uh, notice something which is kind of cool, which is when you start shading in these shapes, the lines disappear. Like, look at that. It's just all light and dark, light and dark. So that rhythm of light and dark in the hair can really help with the portrait. The next step is if I wanted to create, you know, the forehead, it's a little bit, I want to shade that in. Start off with one value. I think this is like a colored pencil. I haven't used this in a long time. So just one shade of gray. Now I can contour the face. Uh, I can put some shading. Like remember the the skeleton we did the corners of the eyes, the 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 opening for the eyes. It was recessed. So the corner of the eyes here, I'm going to make a little bit darker. And as it comes out towards the middle part of the eyelids, it's going to be lighter. So that creates dimension. It creates more of a three dimensional feel to the. I'll make the ear a little bit dark for right now. We're not concerned about the ear. But the side of the face, is it's away from us. It's curving away from us, the plane. So I'm going to make the side of the face a little bit darker. And the cheek will be fairly light. But the chin down here near the contouring of the chin, I'm going to make. And underneath the lower lip, I'm going to put some shading. So that's going to make the lower lip feel like it's coming out. And I'm going to shade in the upper lip just a little bit so that it's a little bit farther away from us. Now the lower lip comes out because of the, the context. The area surrounding that lower lip is darker, so it looks lighter now. Now the whites of the eyes. I don't want to overdo the whites of the eyes. I can, oh, I can add... A little bit of contour underneath the eye. Depending on the eyelash, you can make it more dramatic, make it a little bit darker. And this really depends on how you want your character to look. And uh, I'm trying to keep very loose and organic with the pencil at this point. <clears throat> underneath the nose, I'm going to put some shadow. So the bottom half of the nose is going to be a little bit darker. And the ridge of the nose is going to be highlighted so it's a little bit lighter. And it falls off onto the side. You see that? A little bit, a little bit darker. We're not going to worry about the neck at this point. I'm just going to shade it in just a little bit darker because it, it is farther away. And it's there's shadow right here underneath the chin. The highlight of the chin will not come forward unless we darken in the area around it. So the idea of play of light and dark, you guys know this. Uh, that's, that makes a big difference. So as I work on this, I'm trying to be fairly quick about this, I don't want to make this a really long video, but wow, are you seeing some of the possibilities, how we started with this and built this up? And up close, you know, it's very organic, very gestural in a way, very not too stiff, not too straight lines, but I did use those geometric shapes and those tools to keep it the symmetry of this piece. and. I, there's still areas I need to fix because uh, maybe balance the nostrils out a little bit more. We have the fill trim, that little trough on the top of the... Okay, let's give some definition to that. And and on the corner of the mouth, I'll just make a little bit darker. Like, uh, indicate a little bit of the muscles around the mouth. Define her eyelid a little bit more. Let's darken them a little bit too, just a shade darker, just, just a little bit. So I want the chin, the cheek right here, the, che the cheeks to be standing out. So how do I do that? Let's make that a little bit darker, curling around. And I want this zone right here, underneath the chin. Remember how pronounced the chin was in the skeleton? So we're gonna, and as it falls off to the cheek, off to the side, it's going to be darker, and then the, the chin needs to be remain lighter because it's there's a high point on the skull underneath. Okay, and then here the frontalis muscles, 
so the brow here, it's this area is a little bit more lighter because it's more pronounced. It's coming out. The top of the skull is moving away from us. It's going up into the shadow of the, the hair, the voluminous hair. And now you're seeing the shadows tie in with each other. They're kind of flowing together, the lights and the darks. I'm connecting the shadows. Okay, you can always slow down this video, stop, and just take a look at what I'm drawing. Uh, okay. There you go. So the eyes could use a little more work. I think they're a little bit unbalanced. I need, let me see if I can make this right side a little bit more per dramatic just to counterbalance the other side. Wow, this character kind of looks like Diane Cannon, famous actress from the 70s, 80s. <laughs> Some of you might not know who that is. We forgot the eyebrows. Oh gosh, let's put some eyebrows in there. And I'm going to use the contour of the brow line that we established earlier to create our... There we go. I'll put in a few lines here just to kind of get an idea of in the foreground near the, near the, near the, near the side of the face just to give an indication of couple strands here and there and that kind of tells the the human brain like oh okay I get it there's a but I don't have to I don't have to put that all that detail in the whole body of the hair as it goes back these will be more simplified a little bit more uh, blurry less detailed if I had more time to work on this how was that did you like that was that a, was that a good demonstration Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Right. Let's. I want to move on here. Let me flip this paper here, and I want to go on to Julie's next drawing, which is the side by side drawing. And I'm going to rotate the paper so it's horizontal. Let's see here. Let me open up that file. Give me one second here. One, one minute. Let's see. Side by side. Opening, oh, here we go. Okay, so for the character, and this will be a little bit more, how do you say, um, so we had this character here. Let's see, let's do a, let me use a different pen or pencil. Let me use this. So, what is this? This is a Prismacolor Verithin. Can you see that? Is it focusing? Prismacolor Verithin Terracotta. Terra. Hmm. Terracolt. Terracolto. Oh, Terracotta. Seven, four, five and a half. It says it's made in Mexico, I think. I don't know. Okay. So here I'm going to put a, an X, a very light X. And you can use a ruler if you'd like. You know, so let me use my handy ruler here. Corner to corner. And what does this establish? S, that is the center of this piece of paper. And then I'm going to draw a vertical line. And that vertical line is slightly tilted. I need to... There you go. So this side is where our profile will be. This side is where our, our head will be in, from the front. So here, again, I'm going to draw a box. And just and I'll draw a box on the other side, too. How about that? Equivalent box on the other side, using the same elevation line. But this zone area, this will be our profile, and this will be our, you know, like our drawing from the front here. And let me draw, you saw the previous demonstration, so this one will be a bit quicker. So you use these tools and adapt them to your needs for your character. And it's going to take, you know, multiple attempts. But you know, see those brow, nose, mouth. Look at that. 
Let me hit that. You see how those simple proportional places, these little place markers here? And watch this. We'll do the circle for the nose, two circles for the side. And here, let's make sure one, two, there's a line here. And I'm going to subdivide into three sections, equal sections, okay? And this will tell me this is where the one eye is. This is the other eye. This is the eyelid. Yeah, we're not worried about expression, but I don't. If you don't have these eyelids in there, coming down and getting close to the, uh, what do you say, the the pupil, they look just like they've been drinking Red Bull because <laughs> there's a space. If you look in the mirror and make a surprised look, you can tell what it looks like. I'm not going to go through the muscles here. I'm just blocking in zones for the chin, the cheek. And remember the, the frontalis muscle, like just zones of areas. Put a circle right here, that's like a high point. This is the brow here is a high point right here. Let's do the uh, fill trim coming down. Now this is the middle where the mouth connects. Okay, so how do we do that? So Erica, remember she gave us that demonstration. I'll show it here to you. I'm going to create this shape here on this side. I'm going to overlap slightly and then do that same shape on the other side. Like a paisley extruded paisley shape. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Watch this. I'm gonna create that shape a little bit more volume. There, voila! Thank you, Erica. Look at that. And then we do, we're gonna do the uh, chin right here, zone. And this is our jawline. Okay. And if we want to have a little more, we're gonna to get to the profile in a second. And this is. For Julie and other people, see what was the purpose of that, and I think that was maybe uh, I didn't wasn't clear on that. We need to describe that a little more, and that's the purpose of this video here. And look at that. I'm there's enough space in between, so they don't look cross-eyed or too too dramatically close together. Okay, and then uh, before we do the hair, I just want to show you the equivalent. So now we have the basics of the face and the the head. Okay. So what's the next step? What was the point of those horizontal lines? So I want to make this, this um, ruler uh, 90 degrees parallel with, so I'm going to put a post-it right here, okay? I'm going to align the post-it with the ruler, okay? So it creates that. 90 degrees right here. Okay, so watch this. So if I bring this ruler up and down, so there's a chin, I'm going to touch the chin and make sure that the post it aligns with the ruler. Okay, then I'm going to draw a light line going across so that my next marker here could be the, the top of the chin. Light line going across the, the bottom of the lip light line going across the middle of the lip uh, and you can use as many lines as you want but just be judicious in choosing the ones that you, you want to see the bottom of the nose right there that's important so let's bring that over let's do the eyes where should the eyes be like right there and then the top of the eyes so if these are you know, really way off and it can be kind of confusing there. We already have the top of the the forehead and we have the width and you can use your fingers you know just to measure. Okay Okay. now we're gonna move on to the right side and and then we're gonna do the profile. We're not gonna just copy the same drawing over on this side. So now we're gonna start off with well, there's the bottom of the circle here. Let's block in our circle for our skull side profile. And we're going to make the back just add a little bit more curvature. That's because it's from profile, the, it's more like an egg-like oval shape. Okay, So there's the 
This is the front, this is the back right here. Okay, so, so now we're gonna come across, come down. We're gonna create a line To the chin. You see that line right there? Look at that. It looks like a nautilus shell. Just look at that nice curve. Look at that. It curves all the way around, just comes down, touches that guideline for ourselves going across. Okay, so now we're going to follow along and watch. We're going to go down, and then here's the brow coming up. So I'm going to bring it, bring it out a little bit. There's our brow. And how do we, we're going to wait on the, we're going to wait on the, the nose, one second, we've got the brow come down. Here's the chin, um, the, chick, the cheek, the cheek of the character. Uh, let's, let's draw, let's see, where would the eye be? So you see these two lines right here in between? Let's put like a V notch right there. V, sideways V. And this will be our eye. Right there. We'll put the pupil in there. There's our eye. You see that? And then here, let's do the nose. So this is where the nose would end. And the, the length of the nose is up to you. I mean, you can make it come out this far. That's a big nose. But let me show you. Connect it with the brow. Come up here. And let's just do a triangle right there. And you can round out the triangle. Okay. And then I'm going to come down. Here's the, the filtrum, you know, that little trough underneath the bottom of the nose comes down. And this is where we do the upper lip. So this is the, the curve of the upper lip. And it's going to come in. And then I'm going to draw the lower lip. And these little markers, I'm going to make these the lower lip come in closer to the to the character. And then I'm going to do a little curve for underneath the lower lip. And then we're going to do finish out with a chin. That curve. There you go. And then we're going to do, it's going to kind of follow along the uh, pathway of the, the skull. Remember when we do the skull from the side? So, Julie and the rest of the class, was that interesting? Like, look at that. Like, so we have now kind of like the right drawing. Does do these two drawings connect? Do they have the similar proportions to each other? Um, look at that. You can just scan going across. Look at that. Those That was the purpose of the guidelines. But understanding this complex proportional uh, system, elevations of where things should start and stop. And I think that's where it's kind of difficult sometimes with uh, drawing is to get this, get this across. And here, right here, this is where the, the ear canal would be. And we would draw our ear, basic ear shape. And then we draw our little, little ducky mouth coming up, ducky head. You see that ducky head? There's our ear canal. And then we draw our little curved moon up here on top of the ducky's head. Keep it simple. Here's the lobe of the ear. There you go. Wow. And more time I spend on this, I will put more detail, but you can create variations. You can make the nose a little bit beefier. You can uh, add uh, the nostril. Look at that, the nostril. You can put some shading in there. Change the variations to your, whatever you'd like to add for your character. Strong chin, weak chin. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope that was beneficial and you enjoyed looking at that and seeing that demonstration and I will see you in class.